Izumium after Russian retreat, horror of Russian occupation are revealed. Standing in the gloom, Maski Masimov pointed to the spot where he was tortured with electric shocks. Russian soldier took him from his hell in the basement of Izumium police station. They sat him on an office chair and attached a zigzag crocodile clip to his finger. It was connected by cable to an old-fashioned Soviet military field telephone. And then it began. A soldier cranked the handle, turning it faster and faster. This sent an execution pulse through Maskimo's body. I collapsed. They pulled me upright. There was a hood on my head. I couldn't see anything. My legs were numbed. I was unable to hear in my left ears, he recalled. Then they did it again. I passed out. I came round 40 minutes later back in my cell. The Russian army occupied the police station in April. This followed a furious month-long battle with the Ukrainian force, who had based himself on hill next to Izumin Soviet War Memorial. According to Maskimov, a 50-years-old publisher, the Soviet round up anyone suspect of having pro-Ukrainian views. He had stayed behind to took after his elderly mom. They sought veteran servicemen, home guard volunteer, and city hall official. The Russian turned up with a list of names. Some local politician appear to have collaborated. They include several city council deputies and a retired police chief, Vladislav Sokolov, who became Izum's new pro Vladimir Putin's mayor. President were unable to say how many people vanished during the Russia's five-month occupation of the city. One answer could be found on Saturday in the sunny pine forest on the outskirt of town, close to a Russian checkpoint beneath Orange Bark's tree. Ukrainian forensics experts were carrying out a gruesome process of exhumations and truth-telling. A Russian battalion had parked its tank next to a cemetery, cutting down branches and building underground shelters with net long roof. Izium were dead 443 people since February, joined them in nearby sandy plots. They include 17 Ukrainian soldiers. They were dug up on Friday from a scooped out hollow for a tank used as mass grave. Ukraine's armed force discovered the grisly sight when they swept into Izum a week ago, as part of a stunning counteroffensive that saw them recapture almost the entire northeastern Kharkiv region. On Friday, the first 40 bodies were removed. Some had their hands bound together on the decade arm of a woman was a bracelet of Ukrainian blue and yellow color. On Saturday, Experts in white boiler suits continue digging. Graves were marked with wooden crosses. Watched by police, they scraped, pulled out bodies, and laid them carefully in glade. The first was a soldier, identical from his camouflage trousers and boots. Then two civilians, one possibly female, and another soldiers. All were zipped up in white bags. Sometimes we find IDs and passport, but we don't have names for many of those here. Or cause of death, Roman Kasinko, the deputy chief prosecutor for Kharkiv, told the observer. There are some sign of torture. We found individuals with hand tied together and broken limbs. But he stressed it, it's too early to say if this is another Bucha. The sight smells strongly of human decade and pine resin. Relatives said Russian missile kill their loved one. Oksana Grubaldov had come to report the death of her daughter-in-law family, Antoli, Galina, and their son Artanium, 14. They died on the 9th of March when a Russian warplane bombed their apartment block, she said. As the Russian retreat, however, the price paid by civilian grow clearer. Russian soldiers round up and executes hundreds of civilian in February and March in Bucha and other satellites town in the Kiev region. The latest mass grave in Izum suggests this was not an anomaly. Rather, it is a part of savage pattern seen in each area Moscow occupy. Most of Izum has been destroyed. The main boulevard is full of gutted apartment blocks and wall park marked by bullets. The administration building is an airy sandbag ruined. 
a bomb tour, a chunk of Chert's cupola. The city's beer factory remained closed, but a cafe reopened on Saturday. You look at this and think we don't have a future, Maskimo said. But I believe we do. We can rebuild. That's all for today. Thank you and goodbye.